Hello anatomy colleagues, this is Dr. Alsup, and in this video we will be discussing the naturally occurring arterial anastomoses or communications that occur around the scapular region. And this learning objective is pretty direct, so let's get right to it. As you might imagine, having complex but more importantly robust arterial supply can be a benefit in joint regions, as there is mobility and certain movements may even cause temporary occlusion to an arterial branch. So most joints will have rich arterial supply and comparatively higher frequencies of anastomoses or communication between arteries to make sure there's always adequate blood supply no matter what movement occurs at a joint. Again, this is true for most joints of the body. And while we won't discuss the arterial anastomoses for each joint, we do want to touch on the arterial anastomoses around the shoulder region. Recall that the upper limb is supplied exclusively or almost exclusively by the subclavian artery, which changes its name throughout its path, and of course, there'll be numerous branches throughout the upper limb. Specifically in the shoulder region, there are branches of both the subclavian artery and its communication, the axillary artery, which makes sense. The subclavian artery branches are going to supply more proximal regions, whereas the axillary artery is going to supply more distal regions of the shoulder, uh, the shoulder general region. So let's focus on two regions around the shoulder, starting with the anastomoses that occur in the posterior scapular region. There are three main artery branches that supply this region. There is the dorsal scapular artery, which supplies the more medial portions and is a branch of the subclavian artery running superiorly, so this is more superior here, and again, we're looking at a posterior view. So running superiorly, you have the suprascapular artery, which is also a branch of the subclavian. And lastly, you have the circumflex scapular artery, I'm just gonna send branches kind of all over the place here, which supplies the more lateral portions of the scapular region. And this is a branch of the axillary artery, so not the subclavian artery. So these first two are subclavian, whereas circumflex scapular is a branch of the axillary. And these arteries will send small branches throughout this area and will communicate an anastomose kind of throughout the region. Now the importance of this can really be understood when considering, say, when a ligation needs to occur from a lacerated axillary artery or there's plaque buildup in the axillary artery, which in essence would not send blood through this circumflex scapular artery, which without these communications that occur from the subclavian artery branches would seriously affect the blood supply of this lateral scapular region. So these small collateral branches would provide enough nourishment or blood supply towards these lateral regions, even if there had to be some form of ligation associated with the axillary artery. Another region I want to touch on is around the surgical neck of the humerus, which is just distal to the articulation of the glenohumeral or shoulder joint. So here's the head of the humerus, which we know is going to be the humeral portion of the shoulder joint. The surgical neck is located just distal to the greater, which you can see here in lesser tubercles, um, which is right around this region here, and is a relatively weak area of the humerus. It is a named area, so it has a name due to the relative frequency of fractures in this area. So if there's a fracture of the humerus, it's not uncommon to occur around the surgical neck or associated with the surgical neck. Two branches of the axillary artery will wrap around the surgical neck of the humerus, and they have very descriptive names with the anterior circumflex humeral wrapping anteriorly around the surgical neck, and typically the larger posterior circumflex humeral wrapping around the surgical neck posteriorly. If there is a fracture 
at the surgical neck, it could affect the blood flow through one of these, but often not both, and the collateral blood supply may supply sufficient nourishment to the area that, say, the anterior uh, circumflex had supplied or the posterior. Also of note, the axillary nerve travels in close proximity to the posterior circumflex humeral artery through the quadrangular space, which we discuss in another learning objective, but then both will wrap around the posterior portions of the surgical neck of the humerus. So the axillary nerve may also be affected in a fracture of the surgical neck, which could affect the motor supply to the deltoid muscle and some cutaneous sensation of the skin around the shoulder region. So the, the um, close geographical proximity of these two structures, both through the quadrangular space as well as around the surgical neck, is something that uh, is often tested on um, that close relationship between the two. Excellent. Thank you for your time and attention here in our discussion of scapular arterial anastomoses. Please take time to review and always feel free to reach out with any questions. Have an excellent rest of your day.